You guys have been requesting a DIY planner for a long time, and now that it's a new year, I think it's the perfect time to make one. Planners can be a little on the pricey side, so this DIY version is definitely a less expensive option. This video is also part of Kin's Back to Budget Basics collaboration, so after this video, check out the other videos that are on ways to work within a budget this year. When you go the DIY route for a planner, you will either have to buy the pages or print your own. Since I'm a graphic designer, I'm familiar with designing page layouts, and I designed a simple custom layout which all of you can use in your own planners. And you can find a link to where you can download this template in the video description below. This layout can be printed on both sides of your paper and it can be folded into signatures. Each page has enough entries for one week and you have enough room for notes. There's a spot for the date and you're free to write the month or occasions anywhere you'd like. You will have to fill everything in, but this allows you to customize the look of your pages. For the binding, I used Coptic Stitch just because I really like how it lays flat when it's open, but really the binding is totally up to you. I have an entire playlist full of different binding methods and you can check that out right here. If you want to use one of those instead, it's totally fine. There really is no right or wrong binding to use for this, it's pretty much up to your preference. Feel free to adjust the parts of this tutorial to fit your planner. You can change the pages, the sizes, whatever you want to do to make your planner completely custom. If you want a full list of all the supplies I used, I'll put a list in the video description below and you can also find tips and links down there. Okay, here is how I made this DIY planner. First, I printed the template on 27 sheets of 8.5 by 11 inch paper on both sides so that I would have enough entries for an entire year. Now with everything printed, I'm going to fold each sheet in half. If you want to add more paper for notes, check out this tutorial here to learn how to make your own lined paper. That video has a few easy options you can try or you can just add some blank pages if you prefer. You can also try using a bone folder to press down the folded edge. After those are folded, now stack each page in groups of four to make signatures. If you've made your own custom paper with dates, of course you want to arrange it so all the days are in the right order. In this case, the template is blank so I can put them in any order. If you end up with an odd number of pages, you don't have to have exactly four pages to make a signature. You can just combine those and that will be one signature. Now for the cover, since we're talking about being on a budget, I'm just using a cereal box. You can do this with other cardboard packaging as well. To measure out the size of the cover, just take one signature and trace it. Make two of these for the front and back cover. Then trim them out. You can choose to leave these blank if you prefer or cover them with a cardstock paper. I'm using these two 12 by 12 inch pieces of pattern paper for my covers. Apply some glue on one side of the cover board and here I'm using an extra strength glue stick. Press it down on the paper and then trim off the excess and you want to leave at least an inch border. And cut the corners at an angle like this but leave a little gap on the tip of the board. Then glue the flaps of paper over. And I like to fold it over just like this so that it makes a clean edge. You can also press this down with a bone folder. When you get to the corners, you want to pinch that little gap of paper that you left, and this will ensure that the tip of the cardboard is covered. After all the flaps are glued, then I'm going to cover the inside. To determine the size of the paper, I'm going to take an inch off of each side of the cover board. Mark those measurements twice on your paper so that you have one for each cover, and then cut them out. Then glue that piece centered on the inside of your cover. Repeat all those steps on your other board so that you have two covers. Now I'm going to make the binding holes. On the folded edge of one signature, I marked six points on both ends that are an inch apart. The measurement between the binding holes is really up to you and you can change it if you want a different look to your binding. Now unfold the signature but making sure that they're all centered together and pierce those marks with an awl. Then take off the top page and that will be the template for the rest of the signatures. So unfold your next signature and place that one on top and just pierce through the marks. Continue that on the rest of your signatures. And when you're done, make sure to put that page back onto the signature it came from. Now make binding holes on the covers. Take one signature again, put the signature on top of the cover, leaving about a half inch away from the spine. 
and use the signature as a template to mark the holes. Then pierce the holes all the way through so that they're large enough for your binding needle. Then you can use that as a template to mark the holes on your other cover. Okay, now the covers and the pages are ready to finally bind. I'm using white cotton thread, which I waxed so that it's easier and more manageable to bind with. And if you want to learn how to do this, you can check out this DIY video right here. And another tip, if you're on a budget, you can also use dental floss. It's pretty much just waxed thread and it works just as well. If you want a tip on how to estimate the amount of thread to use, check out this video here. I just double threaded my needle and tied a knot on the end and started binding with a Coptic stitch method. If you're unfamiliar with this type of binding, check out this video right here and it will go into full detail on how you can do Coptic stitch step by step so that you can easily learn how to do it. After all my binding was done, then I added a finishing touch onto the cover. I used vinyl numbers to mark the year. Picking up on the date that we're on now, I just started to fill in the days of the month. Since the book starts on a half week, I just started from there and then tried to keep each spread so that it goes from Monday to Sunday. If you found this tutorial helpful, hit that like button. And if you have any photos of your DIY planners, I would love to see them. So go ahead and share those on my social links and follow me while you're there. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Sea Lemon, for more videos. And don't forget to check out the other videos that are on budget basics right here.